So this is a sort of advanced techniques for shading and toning your comic in a more speedy fashion. Hey, welcome back. This is Citria, C-E-T-R-I-Y-A, and welcome to this video that I would say it's kind of a part two on toning your comic. So if you are very new to using Photoshop for screen tones, I suggest you watch part one of the video. So it'll either pop up as a little info card that you could click on or I will link the video below. So anyways, something that I decided to keep in a second video versus the one video because I did not want to confuse you guys was the fact that there is a bit of a quick method that I discovered pretty recently and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So in the previous video, I talked about how you can go ahead and make um, different shades of screen tones and save it onto your computer. So all I did was open up a screen tone file that I've already saved. Again, if you don't know how to make this dot pixel info, you know, this texture, be sure to refer to a the prior video that I made about manga screen toning. So. What is this technique about? This technique is about using what's called like the clipping mask um, and things like that. So first, let me go ahead and do a demonstration of that. I'm just going to copy this over to here, paste it. And remember right here, we set it to let's see, multiply. So this is a part where it gets just a touch bit advanced and you could use that for screen toning and you could use that for coloring you could use it for patterns all these things and what I find it helpful is the fact that you're not destroying the tone so you could always go back to it um, instead of having to copy a fresh new layer so if you look down here in your layers menu right here you'll see these different icons and then you'll click on the one that says add layer mask and once you click on it, there you go, you have an extra box that's linked to this. And what this is, is again, when it's white, that means it's showing everything on this layer. And then when it's black, it means it's not showing anything on the layer. Kind of like light, light, white comes through, but if it's black, light can't go through. So that's how it is. So what's the importance of this? Well, first I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's not the art layer section, but the clipping mask section is selected and then I am going to fill this whole box right here in black so you see what happened right there all that's black doesn't be shown so the tone is not shown and again you're not erasing your tone you're just um, basically kind of hiding it and then again selecting your quick mask area say whether you use a brush for example I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush I'm using a mouse right now so it may not be the cleanest shape, but say I'm using a brush and I just want to fill something in. You can go ahead and fill it in and there you go with a white brush. So that's basically it um, for this part. You can use a fill bucket if you have enclosed shapes, you can use fill bucket. When you do so, just make sure up here on top it says include all layers. So you can do a quick fill bucket. You can do all these sorts of quick techniques. Now that's only filling it a solid white and black on your clipping mask. Let's say you want to add a gradient without making a separate um, gradient screen tone, right? Especially if you're doing one simple piece, go ahead and select your section that you want to be done like I'm doing right here you go ahead and zoom a little closer so you could see the little selection here and then you could use for example we're gonna go ahead and use a soft brush a soft edge brush this soft edge brush and the normal default soft brush is like this where you end up with this like weird soft gradation but you don't want that you want solid black and white uh, texture so what you do here in the brushes mode right here where you can choose normal multiply darken what you're going to need is dissolve with dissolve instead and let me come in a little closer so you can see the texture see how you have that blended gray with dissolve 
there you go immediate airbrush really quick airbrush and it just stays to black and white so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that section up now you have that airbrush spray and with dissolve you can lower the opacity of the brush which shows you how much pixels will end up showing up that nice airbrush dither effect it's the same way with the gradient tool same way you can set um, you know multiply whatever you can use dissolve also with your gradient brush and fill in things you can lessen the opacity also so that way less of it is sprayed and let's say that the gradient is not exactly where I want then all you have to do is switch your brush back to black and just do slight minor adjustments and there you go so anytime you do any of any kind of you know modifications painting and painting out just switch between the black and the white brush so let's do an example where I purposely kind of like make a quick selection if I am quickly trying to screen tone something real quick. So then let's say I use the radial or the circle type um, gradient map from there. And there you go. You can make your tone a circular gradient tone if you wish. And then once you're done with that, you can go in and clean out what you needed using either the black brush or just an eraser but again make sure it's the clipping mask that you have selected so we have that makes it quick cleaning and again this is just one shade of tone um, layer that I have that I'm just messing around with how much of it is showed through using the clipping mask tool so what other great effect can you do with that right let's say I wish to layer tones and layering tones is like putting one tone on top of each other so a very quick way to do this right you select what you need to select then let's say we gave it a gradient right from afar here that's a nice ombre actually I might go ahead and include a little bit more of the ombre just so you can see the effect a bit more all right let's say I did this really deep ombre or long ombre or what have you but then I want to shade in solid shapes right you can go ahead this time and using your brush with a high opacity you're basically making the color not the color but the opacity deeper and deeper sort of like if you were to take markers or watercolor you put a light layer and then you use the same marker and you shade over it and it'll get darker as you add more and more so what I'm doing is again we only are using the same shade of tone and this is just for quickly being able to add some shade and not have to be bothered with you know making multiple tone layers with all individual tone colors but here you go I've added some shading real quick and look at how it looks from afar now it looks like his necktie has like folds or whatever and from there you can you can also layer in um, the gradients so there I got some gradients and I apologize if I'm so zoomed out that it's kind of, it may be a little bit difficult to see. I, it, I do work pretty zoomed out, so, but I'll zoom in and in, in and out for you guys where it's easy for you to see all the details. So let's say I just want to layer in a double gradient, right? Okay. And there you go and then you can use your brush to add a little bit more detail so again white means it's gonna the tone will see through and black means the tone is not being able to see through and there you go 
Now, it may look a bit messy in the drawing, but if I continue, I pretty much can tone with that one screen tone for the most part. Um, you might, you know, use this to make toning certain sections of your comic much faster or toning a simple image much faster. And that way you lessen how many layers of tone that you have. And of course, because it's a layer, you could always take it off. This gives you the freedom to experiment different shapes or shading techniques if you like and not be too worried about whether, you know, uh, you have to cut in another layer or restart any of your images. So this is how I would see it and hopefully this was helpful to you. Again, this is just something that I recently discovered that I could do. Um, I have maybe different kinds of techniques in terms of screen toning but I think the first video in this video is a good start for beginners enjoy the process let me know how it works for you or if you have any questions below I'm thinking that the next video might be something with actual color this time perhaps some watercolors maybe some Crayola markers you let me know what do you prefer or what you're interested in hopefully this was helpful for you if so share it with others and I will see you guys in the next video